It's not just conservative Democrats like Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin who are willing to fight hard to block a $15 an hour minimum wage. In fact, the National Restaurant Association has ties to all sorts of corporate Democrats in the Senate. And once you understand just how deep that corruption is, you'll get a better understanding as to why these lawmakers are unwilling to serve the best interests of their constituents while simultaneously serving the best interests of companies and corporations associated with the restaurant industry. Now, Jean Shaheen and Maggie Hassan gathered with constituents for a teleconference, for instance, with Tom Butcher, who was recently appointed to the board of the National Restaurant Association. This is the top lobbying group that fought to defeat the $15 an hour minimum wage. Butcher profusely thanked them for their help in thwarting the minimum wage increase, telling them they had prevented countless restaurants from closing down. By the way, the CEO of McDonald's has explicitly stated that in states that increase their minimum wage to $15 an hour, they actually saw an increase in business. Guess why? Because people have money to spend. <laughs> so I know it's a crazy concept. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about how uh, these particular senators have been corrupted by the restaurant, uh, uh, by the restaurant industry. So. Um, Democratic State Representative Maria Perez from New Hampshire noticed that, you know, Maggie Hassan's statements are very similar to the talking points that you hear from the restaurant industry, from this lobbying group. She said, quote, the language that I heard from the senators is the same language I heard from the restaurant association. Maria Perez was in that teleconference and she heard what they were talking about. So let me give you more details. The state of New Hampshire has tried increasing the minimum wage on two different occasions on the state level. Both times their governor, has vetoed it, right? So Chris Sununu is their governor, he's vetoed it both times. The National Restaurant Association loves him, they love him. And so you have this situation in which Maggie Hassan is about to run for reelection in 2022. And she sees the support he's getting from that lobbying group and she's trying to compete. So she's definitely playing along with this scheme to block a $15 an hour minimum wage. But that's just part of the equation. Um, Sununu, the brother of former Senator John Sununu, is under intense pressure to help Republicans take back the Senate. And a recent poll found him with a 51% approval rating among Democrats in the state. The same survey had him edging out Hassan in a head to head match. So she probably looks at that and thinks, "Oh, I need to probably move further to the right and, and serve the best interests of businesses and block a $15 an hour minimum wage. Also, it's worth noting that she received donations from the restaurant association. So both Cinema and Mansion, they spoke at the National Restaurant Association's annual, their annual conference this week. We've talked about it on the show and both share a fundraiser, Ashley Flanagan Kennedy, who's married to the to Sean Kennedy, the top lobbyist for the National Restaurant Association. That's super relevant because it turns out that this person also has ties to Hassan. And that's motivating her decision to essentially block the $15 an hour minimum wage. Yeah, so a whole bunch of things here. First of all, the Hassan strategy of let me try to copy the, the somewhat popular Republican governor by running to the right. Dumbest strategy in the world never works and is not going to work in this case. If they want a right winger, they'll go with a Republican. It's just so obvious. But corporate Democrats are never going to get it because they're paid not to get it. So, in this case, by the National Restaurant Association. Look at how incestuous it is, right? So, the one of the top Democratic fundraisers is married to the top lobbyist for the Restaurant Association. Gee, I wonder why we didn't get $15 minimum wage. Mm-hmm. Because they're all raising money from the guys who don't want to increase the minimum wage. It's so obvious. And yet mainstream media, huh, what, huh? The Intercept they, and, and David Sirota and us are about the only people who ever report on any of this. And so if you ask a mainstream media reporter like, what's a campaign contribution? Oh, oh, the fact that they're raising incredible amounts of money from restaurants who are dead set against the $15 minimum wage. You think that might have something to do with their votes? Of course, it has something to do with their votes. You really have to be nearly brain dead to think that it doesn't have something to do with their votes. 
And so, they, I yeah. mean, maybe we found the biggest suckers in America and made them all national media reporters. Anyway, the, you, speaking of suckers, Maggie Hassan makes the claim, as does Mean Gene Shaheen, uh, that, oh, no, no, we're trying to look out for our constituents. Uh, we're getting letters into our office from waiters and waitresses and bartenders telling us they don't want a higher wage. <laughs> no, totally. I, I like. I know tons of people oh, who don't yeah. want to make more no, money. I know tons no. of people who are like, I really want to struggle. I want to work full time and struggle. I want to work full time and make two dollars and thirteen cents an hour. Yeah, that's called the sub minimum wage. So if you're in a category, mostly tip workers, you can make sub minimum wages two dollars and thirteen cents at the federal level. It's ridiculous, and and of course the restaurants don't want to move that. So they're doing a fake, the most obvious fake grassroots campaigns. And guys, I'll give you context. You remember when the I don't know if you do, but when California was voting on the shared rides, Uber, Lyft, etc., and some other freelancers, that was a real tough issue. And when I went into an Uber, I'd ask people, hey, the drivers, which side are you on? And a lot of the drivers didn't want the Democratic proposal because they wanted the what they consider their freedom as opposed to better wages and more guarantees, etc. Right? So now you could be on either side of that, but the people that were driving were really mixed. That was real, right? On the other hand, I have never in my life met a waiter or waitress bartender who was like, oh, no, no, I want lower wages. No, I want $2.13 and then hope for the best on tips. Oh, no, $15 minimum wage, no, I wouldn't want that. It's not a thing, it's totally fake. It Go is. ask any waiter, waitress, bartender, ask anyone who's ever tipped, hey, do you want guaranteed $15 or not? 100% of them will say, yes, I want the $15 minimum wage. Yeah. This is such obvious horse crap, the only people who would believe it are national reporters. So the one thing I'll add though is what the missing step for the $15 an hour minimum wage propaganda is that they actually had to find a way to make it seem real. Like they didn't even bother to do that. They're just they just made it up, pulled it out of thin air. Yeah. Um, you know, and then with the uh, Prop 22 in California, there was a lot of money involved with uh, you know, these Uber type companies funding the opposition and spreading a lot of misinformation about what that initiative did. But it doesn't matter, at the end of the day, it's the same virus. It's the money in politics that either funds the propaganda or funds the politicians to squash the policies that would actually help workers at the end of the day. So this, none of this is really that surprising to me. The one thing I'll bring up though, Cenk, because you know Nando made this point and I thought it was worth exploring. He talked about how Think about how this country has, because of globalization, shipped its manufacturing jobs abroad. And so really service sector jobs employ the majority of Americans at this point. So if you're living in a state where you rely heavily on the restaurant industry for jobs and for revenue, um, would that also influence your decision to not stir the pot and get them angry? Ironically, as a cook. Oh um, yeah, I didn't okay. even mean that. <laughs> okay, pun, <but>. so <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, no, of course, so don't get me wrong. I know the game that's being played. Corporations hold their own employees hostage and they say, now remember, if you ever dare to pay them a, a cent above what I wanna pay them so that I can maximize my profits, I'll shoot the captors, okay? And so I'll fire all of them, etc. Now, for some small businesses, there's some truth to that, some folks, can't afford to have, let's say, four workers at a certain price, and so they're gonna have three workers instead. So is that completely made up? No, it's not completely made up for small businesses. And then that's an interesting dynamic. For the larger businesses, 100% made up, okay? McDonald's admits in their calls, almost all of them do. And more great reporting again, as usual, from Ryan Grimm and David Sirota. And in that case, it was Sirota. They go on, and Jonathan Larson at tyt.com loves doing this too. You go on the calls that they make with investors, the CEOs and the executives of these companies, and they brag nonstop. They're like, oh yeah, it doesn't matter. We'd make money at fifty dollars minimum wage anyway. But now we're making even more profits because their wages are lower. Ah, yeah, invest in us. We're maximizing profit at the expense of our employees. Now that's not a direct quote, but that is the essence of it. As they brag about how they would make money either way, and of course that's true. Look. That's why it gets so depressed at the state of the media in America. All you have to do is look at their profits and see, okay, now if you 
Is there a single business reporter in the country? And then do the math on if they applied minimum wage to the number of workers they have, how much profit would they make instead? And the answer is a ton. Yeah. And they would still make a ton of profit, right? So the idea that they would that McDonald's or Denny's would go out of business if you did 15 dollars minimum wage is a complete and utter lie, lie on top of lie. And so, but the minute a politician says something, oh, the waiters don't want to get paid, right? Every reporter's like, waiters don't want to get paid. Maggie Hess is a wonderful person, and she's doing this only because she's looking out for the waiters and waitresses. Absurd, ridiculous, it's called bribery. We've legalized it through campaign contributions. That is your answer for why they're doing it. Please wake up. Yeah, and look, we do have some fantastic business reporters. They're all on CNBC where <laughs> two thirds of the screen is taken up by a stock market ticker. But it's okay, it's okay. I'm sure that they do great reporting. There. Thanks for watching the Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.